Well, hello, everybody. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. You know, once in a while, I see these articles that come out, and people are talking about Lego being a better investment than gold. And unfortunately, with those articles, a lot of times these people are not actually invested in Lego, and they're not invested in gold, and they really have no idea what they're talking about. I shake my head sometimes at these articles. Oddly enough, I love gold, and I love Lego. I have for many, many, many years Lego since I was a kid, and I actually have some facts for you because I am a seller of Lego. So I'm here to give you the truth on whether or not Lego is a better investment than gold. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. When people hold gold, they often kind of shy away from the gold is an investment. It's a preservation of wealth. It's a long-term hold. It pretty much is a store of money rather than regular dollar bills or anything like that in the bank. You hold your own power by being your own bank. That's kind of the allure of gold, preserving your own wealth. Now with Lego, you're preserving space for sure. And this right here, these five gold coins, these are a little bit larger of normal gold coins, but they represent about $11,000 cash as of today's price of gold being at about $1,800 an ounce. Now, these boxes here are all filled with Lego, and some of them are quite expensive as far as Lego sets go, and they represent about three thousand dollars total out of all of these and you can see the shelf space that these take up and they didn't get to that price immediately once you bought them it took in some cases years to get to that price and in other cases they're literally the same price as when i bought them years later so eleven thousand dollars versus three thousand dollars and this is priceless. So space becomes a huge issue with Lego sets. Even the little sets will start to add up in extreme ways after just a short amount of time. Whereas this $11,000 can fit in the palm of your hand. You can hide it just about anywhere. These sets right here, there's no hiding these sets. You got to have a whole special shelving system in order to hold some of this stuff. Some of these sets are extremely large and heavy. This one has 4,002 pieces. Now, interestingly enough, gold has a set price, the spot price. Easy to determine what that is. Lego, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. Um, and we're going to talk about some of these areas where you can sell and buy Lego. But one of the areas called Bricklink is a great place to actually identify the price of sets and the pieces within Legos. So now you may be asking me, why am I talking about pieces rather than full sets? Well, actually, sometimes the pieces have really good value to them. And me selling Lego at one point, I had a whole operation. And here's an example of some of the cups that I had to identify and put all different pieces in these hundreds and sometimes thousands of different cup systems. And that way it would keep them safe from different conditions, humidity, um, lighting. And I tell you what, this is one, two cups full of uh, Lego. At one point, when thousands of cups filled these shelves, and here's some more empty ones, it got to be to the point where it was just out of control. And if you had to find a cup full of Lego way in the back, Oh, what an absolute nightmare. But actually, these pieces are identifiable on BrickLink, individual pieces. Sometimes they have a little value. Maybe these pieces right here are 30 cents a piece. But when you sell 10 of them, now you have $3. And pieces like that can add up when you're selling large amounts to one person. You can actually do pretty well. But again, space is absolutely, I mean, just an issue here. Now, believe it or not, Lego that's actually out of the box still has some value. And you can actually sell the entire set as it is to some companies, and you can actually make out pretty well. Uh, another thing about Lego is they collect dust like you would not believe. 
and it's just disgusting. And trying to keep the dust off of this stuff, this was only dusted maybe two months ago and it already needs it again. It's a constant, constant battle upkeep on this stuff. But there's companies out there that will buy the entire set as it is, you just bring it in your car and then just set it in front of them and they'll buy it as is. Uh, one example, bricks and minifigs. Bricks and minifigs will actually buy the sets just as they are. Um, they don't pay very much though. That's the full set within a box. They only pay you 20% of whatever the eBay sold listing is on these things. 20%. So if you go out and buy a set for $100, you're only getting 20 bucks for that set. And built sets that are already built, sometimes, depending on the set and the theme, maybe Star Wars, could be a little bit higher or lower than that price. But you never know which set is going to be popular. Just because it's a Star Wars theme set or other popular sets, Harry Potter, um, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, doesn't always necessarily mean value with these. You just Sometimes you just have to take a guess and maybe the set's popular, maybe it's not. This right here is a set that I took and as an example of a set where you just don't know. Um, I thought that this set right here would be very popular. It's a pretty set, has a lot of little characters in it. Um, it's a nice little town set. And I thought, you know what? Let me buy 10 of these boxes. They're a few hundred dollars a piece. Now, one thing that happens to Lego is after a while, and sometimes maybe you know sooner than later, they retire the sets, meaning they no longer put those sets out. You can't buy them from Lego anymore. They're not creating them. And sometimes those retired sets actually go up in price significantly. Now, unfortunately, with my gamble and my guess on this set right here, Lego has not retired this set yet. And in fact, this set right here came out in 2017 and they're still making it. So the price hasn't really changed on this thing. So now this is just sucking up space and it's become a nightmare. And the longer they keep it from being retired, the more they're making, the less the price has a chance to go up and up and up. Whereas some sets, they retire so quickly that maybe it's limited, maybe the person never got a chance to buy it. Those sets tend to do very, very well. In fact, let me show you one. So this is Ninjago City. This is a huge set. Got a lot of pieces, 4,867 pieces. It's a massive set. This was a few hundred dollars when it first came out. This was to go along with the Ninjago movie that came out. And this piece has done very, very well. It's almost worth about double, maybe even closer to triple now from when I bought it. It's worth about $850 according to Bricklink. And we'll talk more about Bricklink here in a minute. But this was a home run, didn't last very long, retired pretty quickly. And so this is one of those sets where you hope to buy. But again, it's a massive set. It takes up so much room and you literally have to have it on a shelf because of the heft of it. And you don't want to, like I said, crease up the box and, you know, smash it up at all. It's, it's a lot of room to store. Now, sometimes the minifigs themselves that come in the Lego sets are the big money winners. And you can tell that Mickey right here is a little dusty. Now, unfortunately with Lego, it does have a few problems. Whereas gold, non-corrosive, stood the test of time, been valuable for thousands of years, Lego, unfortunately, has some issues. Under extreme heat and cold, they will not stick very well to other pieces of Lego. And this right here is an example. I actually put Mickey on the dashboard of the car for a couple days, you know, just to impress the kids. It kind of did, probably not. But Mickey has now lost his ability to be all sticky to other pieces of Lego. And people will view this as not worth as much and they won't give you as much for it. So unfortunately that Lego right there is kind of shot in value where Mickey was actually, you know, worth quite a bit. Um, but they also, uh, with certain uh, levels of humidity, they get moldy really quickly. And as you can see that Lego has plenty of crevices and little, you know, hidey spots, um, the mold can just be devastating for this. So now if you want to clean Mickey, maybe he has some mold on him, maybe he's got some dirt and grime on him, uh, typically you'd put him in some light detergent, uh, you know, warm water, and just kind of mix him around there a little bit. And unfortunately, uh, cleaning the plastic 
will slowly start to deteriorate it as well. And a few of those cleanings, and again, you have that same problem. It doesn't stick as well. The color starts to fade and Mickey is not as gorgeous as he used to be. So extreme temperatures, heat and cold can ruin them. Uh, moisture can definitely ruin them. And lighting too, you gotta be careful with lighting because sunlight creeping through your window can decolor some of these guys right here. And then they're not worth anything. Uh, unfortunately, that is a case with Lego. Um, and then the boxes, of course, made out of cardboard, not very sturdy, and also moisture ruins them. Um, and again, people want to have that nice pristine box. You start to have any kind of lighting that goes in there and fades the box away. You got to admit to that stuff when you go to sell it. And, you know, you hold this stuff for years and years and years sometime just to get a little inkling of value out of it. And sometimes it's hard to do to keep it out of the elements, keep it safe. You just feel like you're just really being protective of these boxes. Whereas again, this stuff right here fits anywhere. Um, non-corrosive, stood the test of time, not going to get all moldy on you. You know, it's easy to put these in one of these little plastic things too, just for a little extra fingerprint protection. Now, sometimes Lego actually has promotions where you buy a certain amount from the company itself and you can actually get little bonuses. So this was a bonus that was given at one point, Darth Revan, and Darth Revan is a little minifigure. No, I'm not going to take it out of this package because Darth Revan is getting close to over a hundred dollars now. For this little minifigure just one little character right here in this little package so sometimes you can definitely hit a home run with that and these aren't too big this is easy to store put it in like a little tupperware or something like that and you should be good to go these kind of things right here can definitely be a home run with lego there's also a thing called the lego store you might have one near you i have one in disney springs near me here in florida and they have a whole wall of different Lego pieces where you can put into these big cups right here. And they have different size cups, but as long as the lid kind of sort of fits on there, they'll tape it on there if need be, but you can come out with all these pieces in one of these cups. Sometimes those pieces, again, are kind of valuable. If you know what you're getting, if you know how to stack the pieces in here correctly, then you can do kind of well on just getting a whole bunch of individual pieces. Now, unfortunately, with the Lego community, you start stacking pieces together now they're considered used. You can't really sell them as a new piece anymore because now they've been attached to another piece of Lego and it's a used Lego piece. Where do you sell Lego if you are trying to invest in it, right? You've stored it on your shelf for three to four years. The price has come up about $100 on the set and now you think, hey, it's time to sell. Well, obviously you can sell it locally. Pawn shops, uh, like I said, bricks and minifigures. Um, those places, of course, are going to tear you apart on your profit. They're going to take a large portion of it. Like I said, with bricks and minifigs, only 20%. That's absolutely a ripoff. Um, it's a disgusting practice. Another way to do things is try to connect locally with people that might be interested in your set locally. But unfortunately, with some of these really high-end um, sets that go up in price, it may be something you need to ship out. Now, like you've seen, some of these sets are huge. Um, one of the sets that I have there on the shelf, the UCS Millennium Falcon, literally I had to walk with it attached to wheels that came with it <laughs> attached to the box itself. Lego did that. And you had to wheel it that way because it was it's such a big, unusual sized box. So when you ship something like that out there, you got to find a box that fits the thing. That's a pain because every single Lego set is all different size. And then also you got to pay for shipping. Shipping on something unusually sized and large can get quite expensive. I have spent $50 plus shipping only a set before. That gets annoying. Now, back to where else you can sell it. Um, online, you're talking eBay, of course. If you do sell it on eBay, you got to ship it out. You got eBay fees, you got PayPal fees or other kind of fees, credit card fees. One of the best places, well, it used to be the best, is BrickLink. BrickLink is like the home of people that know about Lego. So if you are going to be a Lego seller or even a buyer, you want to go to BrickLink. Now, unfortunately, because BrickLink used to be the best place in the world to go, but recently, after the last, I think, 2019, Lego themselves purchased BrickLink. And that devastated the community within BrickLink and just tore apart what BrickLink was. The fees now on BrickLink to sell are outrageous. When you sell a set, of course, you're paying for shipping. Uh, you get hit with PayPal fees if you're using PayPal to accept a payment. And then there's an additional fee from PayPal that comes off of BrickLink right off the bat. 
And then you think that's it, right? But no, at the beginning of the next month, they hit you with another fee from BrickLink. You get double feed now that Lego owns this thing. I don't understand how they can get away with this. But um, it is a great resource to find out kind of like what things are going for. And here's an example of the set that I showed you earlier that hasn't retired yet. I kind of have just been sticking it out on this thing. I'm probably going to end up not making a whole lot of money and just wasting my time. But uh, it kind of shows you who has what, what it's been selling for. And over here on the left, you can see the quantity that has been sold in February and kind of the pricing. So you can kind of get a kind of an average. So January 2022, um, on average, you know, approximately 250 or so. It looks like it's been selling for, which I tell you what is not good for the selling price on this one right here because I think I paid about that much for them. And I, like I said, I got 10 sets. <laughs> it's been hard to store those for going on five years now. Now, where can you sell gold, right? Well, people that watch my channel, of course, know that. There's plenty of online websites. There's plenty of places locally. Any coin shop, pawn shop, uh, bullion shop, or online bullion shop or coin shop will always buy gold. You'll never have a problem selling it. You can easily see the spot price, which right now is eight, uh, $1,812.07. And you can sell directly this way. I mean, it's, it's really simplistic. Um, it's much less of a guess on what things are, uh, what things are going to do. With Lego, you're really trying to take a gamble here. And again, not every Star Wars set is valuable. Not every uh, little town set is valuable. You don't really understand what is going to be valuable. You don't know what set's going to retire from Lego, uh, what they're going to retire early or later. You end up taking a large gamble and you invest a lot of space and time on this thing. And now with all the fees from everywhere, even BrickLink has crazy fees now that they're owned by Lego, you end up just getting hammered to death. Whereas if I take an ounce of gold, I go into a shop, I should get at least the spot price, which is about $1,800, like I said. When I take this right here to the shops or I sell it online, it's fee after fee after fee that you're getting hammered with. If I end up taking these 10 sets that I've held for five years now, these assembly squares, and I try to sell them all online, let's say I do sell them all online, I will make less money than I purchased them for originally after shipping, after the double fees that I get hit with, and after just every other bit of hassle, it's going to be way less, way, way less. And I forgot, I even got to buy special boxes to fit these things because you shouldn't just ship them as they come in the Lego box because, again, people want them in pristine condition. You really got to pad your box up real good, and that's extra stuff you have to buy to ship these things. I tell you what, it is an extreme, extreme pain to do this. Now, not every set is a failure like Assembly Square. There's some sets out there that do very well. But again, you're losing a large percentage on the fees and it takes out a lot of that profit. So let's say you have a set that you bought for 400 and now it's worth 800. You think, hey, I doubled my profit only after two years. It became retired. Now it's more valuable. Well, think about that 10% fee or so right off the top and then another 3% fee from BrickLink, and then a 3% fee from PayPal, you're talking 16%, plus you had to ship it, you probably lose somewhere around two to $300 in that whole process. So your investment of $400 is now only about $100 profit after two years. Is that worth it? Maybe. Um, now gold, you know gold goes up and down. And it's actually been steadily going up. It's at kind of a near high right now. And it's been doing pretty well. It's been doing steadily well. But again, it's not really an investment. I can think of 100 things that are true investments versus gold, which is meant as a store of wealth. Now, one thing people do, and this does work, is you'll find sometimes stores, and Walmart is notorious for this, that they'll mark items on clearance that are Lego because new Lego sets have to come out. They have to make shelf space. And so these sets need to be moved out. So they'll be in the clearance section or they'll get like a little clearance sticker. Sometimes you can do really, really well on those, uh, flipping those for a profit. And a set that normally would be 10 to $15, like Black Widow here, you only buy it for $5. And now you can potentially do well, uh, maybe short term or long term on these things. So 
that is something right there that a lot of people do is they search for the deals. One of the websites that used to work really well for that was called Brick Seek, which would find brick and mortar stores and find out which Lego sets actually had things on sale. And it went beyond Legos too. You could find many different things on clearance through Brick Seek. But that was a strategy for a lot of people trying to sell Lego is they would go try to scour the stores for these clearance things. It takes a lot of time, of course. And you're gonna be saying, you know, spectacular, at least you can't fake Lego. You can fake gold and there's ways to test for gold, sure, but you can, you can fake gold. Well, actually there's fake Lego out there and uh, there's actually knockoff Lego too, which is really not valuable and it's just fun to build for a lot of people, but you don't actually have the same value in Lego. And it's just so weird to hear that there's knockoff Lego and fake Lego out there, but there absolutely is. And unfortunately, there's no machine to test for these things. And with 3D printing, you kind of wonder what technology is going to do in the future with building Lego with these machines. Whereas, again, gold, you can definitely detect it being fake, and it's beautiful. Believe it or not, Lego thievery is a big deal too. Sometimes people will go into Walmarts or other similar stores, open the box, take out the valuable pieces, maybe a valuable minifigure, and then try to close the box up. And you don't know that you're missing these pieces until you come home, try to build the set. Or if you're trying to store the box, maybe you don't know for five years plus down the line. And then when you go send the box out to somebody, they open it and find out that it's missing that really important piece. So using this information, I really kind of want you to be the judge. Um, these articles, like I said, kind of do a poor job at telling the truth about things because they don't know the truth. They haven't been there selling Lego and stacking gold. I have both stacked gold, sold gold. I have stacked Lego and sold Lego. So I do know the inside workings of both. You know, for me personally, I think that gold, although not typically an investment, is actually truly a better investment than Lego is when you consider all of these things. The fact that Lego cannot stand the test of time, it is going to deteriorate. Plastic does not last forever. It's very fickle when it comes to elements. Um, gold can hold up in so many different conditions, no problem whatsoever. It can go to the bottom of uh, a, you know, an ocean and it can come out looking like gold and still be just as valuable. Um, I don't know. There's so much space that it takes to, and this is not a quarter. This is not a tenth of what I've got, you know, stacked up just waiting for the price to come up on this stuff. And then at some point I have to ship it. Ultimately, when I get tired of stacking and holding the Lego, I'm probably going to end up taking an overall loss on the whole lot, just trying to get rid of it because it doesn't go up, you know, infinitely. There's definitely a limit typically to where a lot of these Lego sets will go. Uh, the Hobbit set right here is an example. Although it's a good, valuable set, this Hobbit set right here, it's kind of stalled out these last couple years or so. And, uh, you know, all it takes is for Lego to put out a new Kylo Ren ship or a new BB-8, um, maybe a new one of these little Hobbit holes right here. And potentially you're kind of at risk. Is that old set going to be more or less valuable? Is the new set going to be more or less valuable? You know, um, the old Millennium Falcon, the UCS Millennium Falcon, dropped very significantly in price. That was a couple thousand dollars set at one point. But when the new one came out, that old one came down in price quite a bit, unfortunately. So you just never know. It's a real, real gamble. You can do well on these, but anybody with any kind of experience selling Lego will tell you it's not all fun and games. And I would like it to be. I mean, Legos are fun. I've been playing with Legos since I was a little boy and is why I love them. I've passed on the love of Lego to my kids. They absolutely adore Legos. I love playing with them. I love just building all kinds of weird things uh, with them and, and just having fun. It is a fun toy for sure. And in fact, Lego is the biggest toy in the entire world. And I know you're probably like, spectacular, that's impossible. There's other toys that are way bigger than Lego. But no, it's not true. Um, worldwide, Lego is the biggest toy. And it's like in every country of the world. 
and you go down maybe your local Target, your local Walmart, next time look at your Lego section in there. It's the only toy that has an entire aisle and sometimes two aisles, sometimes three aisles dedicated to nothing but Lego. There's so many different themes out there. And like I said, it's a fun toy, not to take anything away from it, but I don't agree that it is the best investment out there for you. It's not better than gold in my personal opinion. It's neat, it has potential, but there's a lot of risk when it comes to Lego. A lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of space. Anyways, I've said enough about Lego. This is a silver and gold channel, um, of course. I prefer this stuff, which is why I've kind of moved on to holding this stuff as opposed to Lego, because it's just not as good as people want to make it out to be. And these articles that come out every so often, they're just completely, completely incorrect. Anyways, I got to go for now. Greatly appreciate you watching. And uh, you tell me down in the comments what you think. You think that Lego ultimately is a better investment? Um, is gold a better investment? Or something else? I'm sure you're going to say something else. I got to go for now, though. Spectacular is out. To wear out the plastic, to wear again, it doesn't stick very well. There goes a giant... <laughs>